The Hohokam, masters of irrigation, built a vast network of canals that sustained their society for over a thousand years. What secrets lie buried beneath the modern streets of Phoenix? The Hohokam culture flourished in Arizona from AD 600 to 1450, constructing one of the largest prehistoric irrigation networks ever built. In the Salt River Valley, they created a vast system of over a thousand miles of intricate canals, allowing them to cultivate thousands of acres in the arid Sonoran Desert. These ancient canals were not static structures, but rather a dynamic system that evolved over several centuries. As the river course and water levels changed, the Hohokam built, abandoned, and rebuilt their canals. They relocated canal heads when necessary and dealt with the destruction caused by floods and sediment buildup. Despite these challenges, their irrigation system remained an engineering marvel, used for more than 14 centuries. Some canals spanned great distances, with lengths up to 16 miles and widths of 50 feet. The Hohokam employed various techniques to build their canals. They constructed weirs made of logs and branches, placed at an angle in the river to divert water into the main canals. They regulated water flow in the distribution canals using gates, also made of logs and branches, which were manually operated at canal intersections. To minimize erosion and slow water velocity, they placed stone paving, known as riprap, near the gates. A network of lateral field canals transported water from the main canals to the agricultural fields. The Hohokam possessed a remarkable understanding of water engineering. They recognized the complexities of water flow and carefully controlled the slopes of their canals to maintain a steady water flow. Shallow slopes would have allowed sediment buildup, while steep slopes would have caused erosion. Archaeologists believe they may have used simple surveying equipment, such as saguaro ribs and stones, to level and determine the appropriate slopes for their canals. Despite the complexity of their canal engineering, the Hohokam used simple tools for construction. Stone and wood tools, including fire-hardened sticks and tabular knives, were used to dig the canals. Without the help of draft animals, the Hohokam removed tons of stone and sand by hand, using only baskets to carry the debris. The origins of the Hohokam people have been a topic of debate among researchers. Early theories suggested that they migrated from Mexico, but a groundbreaking discovery in the 1990s revealed the existence of an early agricultural period ancestor in Tucson. This ancient society grew corn, lived in sedentary villages, and developed irrigation canals, possibly occupying southern Arizona as early as 2000 BC. They transitioned from hunter-gatherers to settled agricultural communities, laying the foundation for the Hohokam culture. The Hohokam were the only North American culture to rely so heavily on irrigation canals, engineering the most sophisticated system in the Americas. Their canals, perfectly laid out on the landscape with a gradient of one, two feet per mile, enabled agriculture to thrive in the desert. Some of these massive canals measured 15 feet deep and 45 feet wide, allowing the Hohokam to irrigate up to 110,000 acres. The Hohokam achieved an extraordinary accomplishment in engineering through their irrigation systems, which allowed them to prosper in the desert areas of central and southern Arizona. By constructing an intricate network of irrigation canals that redirected water from the Salt and Gila rivers, the Hohokam transformed arid desert valleys into productive agricultural hubs. This infrastructure included primary canals, secondary canals, and smaller lateral canals that dispersed water across agricultural lands. Inside the canal, a headgate was probably installed to control the volume of water entering the system. The main canals, which transported water from the river to the fields, were significantly larger near the river junction and gradually decreased in size as they approached their terminus. This design maintained a relatively constant water velocity, preventing erosion and sedimentation that could lead to increased maintenance requirements. Distribution canals played a crucial role in delivering water from the main canal system to the fields, while also managing the relationship between the water level and the ground surface. The Hohokam employed various water control features, such as diversion gates at the junctions of main and distribution canals, and tapons or water control gates within the canals themselves. By closing a tapon, the water would back up and rise in elevation, creating a head of water that could be strategically manipulated to optimize irrigation efficiency. 
These features allowed them to manipulate water levels and create a sophisticated irrigation network. The Hohokam's irrigation systems demanded careful upkeep, including frequent canal cleaning and repairs to mitigate sedimentation and flood damage. The construction, maintenance, and operation of the canal systems required a significant and well-coordinated effort from the community. The Hohokam grew a diverse range of crops, including maize, legumes, squash, barley, and amaranth, as well as cotton, gourds, and tobacco. They also utilized nearly 200 species of Sonoran desert plants, promoting the growth of particular species for food and trade. Their engineers possessed an intimate understanding of the local topography, including the subtle variations in slopes, drainages, and soil composition. This knowledge allowed them to develop sophisticated techniques for delivering water to agricultural fields, tailoring their approach to the specific characteristics of each topographic setting, such as steep slopes or flat river terraces. The volume of soil removed during canal construction was immense, with estimates suggesting that approximately 800,000 cubic meters of soil were excavated for the main canals in Canal System 2 during the colonial and classic periods, and over 400,000 cubic meters during the sedentary period, AD 900 to 1100. The amount of labor required was partially dependent on the volume of water flowing in the Salt River, as frequent flooding during the late colonial and classic periods often damaged or destroyed the canals, necessitating redesign and reconstruction. Estimating the actual time and effort required for canal construction is challenging, as it depends on factors such as the amount of soil a worker could remove in a day, the number of hours worked, the number of individuals involved, and the duration of the construction process. However, Given that a single worker could move approximately three cubic meters of soil per day, the construction of many canals would have required more than 25,000 person days of labor, suggesting that some canals may have taken several years to complete. Recent studies show a dramatic rise in population in the Salt River Valley from AD 1100 to 1300. During this period, the Hohokam constructed their last large irrigation network on the river, using all available water to irrigate crops. This placed significant stress on their most critical resource, water. In response, the Hohokam implemented major cultural changes, including the construction of mounds. While these changes appear to be an attempt to share water and feed the growing population, their efforts ultimately failed. From AD 1350 to 1450, the population plummeted, and traces of the Hohokam vanished from the archaeological record. The Hohokam's irrigation system served as a forerunner to modern-day Arizona's primary canal system, which largely follows the original routes established by the Hohokam centuries earlier. Their canals, which lie beneath the streets of metropolitan Phoenix, continue to provide valuable information about their engineering expertise and social structure. That marks the end of this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Archaeotrek for more content like this.